Yes. Yes? Oh, come on! Why didn't Queen Chrysalis join the long list of reformed villains? For vets of this channel, you know how much of a Chrysalis sympathizer I am. The way she behaved in the Canterlot wedding cast her as some megalomaniacal tyrant. But I always like to believe this wasn't the case. She had a kingdom to feed, so her stance against Equestria could have been purely logical. In the light of To Wear and Back Again, many would find it hard to maintain the same perspective. Her entire kingdom became forever satisfied, which should be a dream come true, right? Yet she pouts off planning some sort of revenge. If she were a true person of her people, she would have stuck with the reformed changelings. Not so fast. Let's look at this from Chrysalis's perspective. The changeling transformation made Thorax the new changeling leader, physically setting him apart from the rest. Whether this was because he was into the friendship thing for longer, or if Destiny somehow selected him, it's kind of an awkward situation for Chrysalis. I mean, Starlight did offer for Chrysalis to be, quote, the leader the changelings deserve, but only a few lines earlier, she said this. We defeated the changelings with no magic at all. They found a new leader, and they're all kind of good now. So not only are her people accepting equestrian ideals right before her eyes, but she is also being replaced, no less by the very traitor that caused this mess to begin with. I'm not saying a reformed Chrysalis couldn't have ruled alongside Thorax, but I think this all happened way too fast for Chrysalis to make a logical decision. Just like how Starlight didn't realize her village was genuinely happier once they were liberated. So I still believe Chrysalis wants what's best for her people. She just doesn't think this is it. If this is true, she's bound to come around eventually. Good thing too. I mean, who else is gonna lay eggs for the future? changelings, not Thorax. But between now and then, there's still the issue of revenge. Starlight's case almost ended in disaster, so what kind of revenge can we expect from Chrysalis? If we extrapolate on this comparison, she'll spend some time gathering information, figuring out how she can hit Starlight where it hurts. But honestly, I don't think Chrysalis is gonna go for such a personal attack. If the writers do stick to the petty revenge narrative, I'll be disappointed. For one thing, they've already done that, but more importantly, Chrysalis can still get her children back. Think of it like this, Chrissy is the mother bear, the changelings are her cubs, and Starlight is smack dab between them. That's a bad place to be. Of course Chrysalis is going to be ticked, but the mother bear doesn't maul the obstacle just because she wants revenge for getting in the way. She does it to keep her children safe. Now if the changelings were dead, I can imagine Chrysalis devoting herself to revenge, but they aren't. What I can't imagine is Chrysalis upright disowning her children because they're going through a rebellious phase. Realistically, she should only be focusing on the offender so she can take back the offended. There might be some revenge in her plan, but the big picture is getting her children back. So that's the what, but now we have to ask how. How could Chrysalis win the changelings over? Well, I doubt it'd be friendly. If she returned without changing her ways and demanded a vote for a leader, it's not like it would be a very hard choice. Candidate A still believes in the lifestyle that pretty much starved the changelings for years. Candidate B has seen the light. Always hungry or always satisfied? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the always hungry. No. Forget the democratic appeal. In order for Chrysalis to restore her rule, she would have to take the reform changelings back with brute force. Sounds harsh, right? Well, if Chrysalis really does see the reform changelings as lost and confused, taking them over by force would be doing them a favor. That's tough love. But I'm sure lots of you are thinking, is this even realistic? I mean, come on, she may be bigger than the rest, but you can't possibly expect her to go up against an entire kingdom. How do you overpower a group of changelings? Why, with a group of changelings. An army of changelings who had not experienced the new way of life could easily be made to believe theirs is better and can be made to fight based on that assumption. Yes, I think Chrysalis is bound to start a changeling civil war. And I'm not talking the small scale stuff like two YouTubers disagreeing on which side is better. I mean army versus army. Now, most of you are probably wondering where Chrysalis would get these unreformed changelings. They were all converted, right? Not all of them. It's possible that somewhere else were at the time, but that's not what I'm counting on. Chrysalis could hatch a new colony. Now, I could pull a map pad and give a five minute lecture on insect biology, but suffice it to say, queens of a colony only need to mate once and can lay eggs for the rest of their lives. I think this is what Chrysalis left to do. Wait a minute. When Starlight's people were taken from her, she didn't start another village from scratch. She got right down and dirty to the revenge. What's to say Chrysalis won't do the same thing? Well, these are totally different relationships. Chrysalis wasn't just the leader of her people like Starlight was, she was also their mother. Though she may have lost her first kingdom for now, Chrysalis has the opportunity to raise a new generation of changelings. The new batch would not only serve to counteract her rebellious children, but could one day become the army that forces them back under her control. Chrysalis has the motives and the means to pull off a changeling civil war. All she needs is time. I'm not sure when we could expect this war to happen. It really depends on how long it takes for a changeling to grow from this to this. 
and we can't necessarily make time-based assumptions going off of real insect colonies since changelings are so much bigger. But I hope they grow a good deal faster than ponies do. You know, so we don't have to wait as long as we did between a canterlot wedding and to wear him back again. Who's excited for the season 10 finale? Of course, regardless of when it happens, I don't want Chrysalis to be successful here. But a civil war just might be what it takes to convince Chrysalis that the equestrian changelings are better off. Just imagine this war for a second. Large-scale espionage, morphing tactics on both sides, complicated code words, epic fighting sequences, and throughout the whole thing, the equestrian changelings would always have the advantage of constant nutrition. This display of superiority could even be necessary to convert Chrysalis and her people, because just like many civil wars, there is a right side here, even biologically speaking. It's a funny thing that I should have touched on when I was playing Dr. Wolf. When the changelings transformed, they entered cocoons. This indicates not a magical fluke, but rather the next natural stage of life. This means unreformed changelings aren't even fully developed. Ladies and gentlemen, if these are your butterflies, the old changelings are your caterpillars. <coughs> a and Y. I rest my case. Those are my thoughts on the whole thing, but what do you guys think? Is Chrysalis just going for petty revenge? Or is she gonna raise a new generation of unreformed changelings? Will there be a changeling civil war? Leave your thoughts in the comments. This has been the Brony Notion, signing out until next- <laughs>